Welcome back to TalkNorth.com. Thank you for listening. If you can, please download before you listen. It helps our business. I'd also like to thank our producer, Brandon Morton, and let you know if you'd like to sponsor this program or any of the programs on the network. You can reach me at jsouhan47 at gmail.com. You're listening to Stephen Strom on TalkNorth.com. And here we go. Let's get this thing started on TalkNorth.com. Strom Sports Show. Stephen Strom, nice to have you with us. If you want to advertise with the show, Jim Suhan, he's on our website at TalkNorth.com. And if you have any questions, anything you want to talk about, you hit me up on Twitter at SSTROM32. I'll post some videos. I'll foreshadow the show this week. I did that with the Timberwolves rant. Um, so there's some good stuff on there. Big shout out to my producer, Brandon Morton, as always. Now, let me give you the rundown for the show. Negative Dave, yes, he will join me. It's been a absolutely pity week of Minnesota sports. I, I feel like I just keep saying this, like what else is new? I, I'm going to have to find a different word. I guess this is going to be the norm from now on. Uh, but he will join me after my monologue. We'll get into a lot of the stuff that went on during the week. You've got the Flyers, that one of the worst teams in the NHL, beat the Wild. Then he had the Gophers. I'm recording this on a Thursday, by the way, so the Gophers were last night. Gophers just getting destroyed against Illinois, a four-win team that they just can't lose. I mean, like I, I'll get into it. I'll get into it. And then you got the Wolves, who lose by 42 against the Jimmy Butler and the Philadelphia 76ers. And then a little bit later, we will get into the Vikings free agents. I, I named a, you know five or six of them that we'll get into later in the show. I'll tell you if they should sign them. Or let him go. All right, so let's get into the two inexcusable blowouts. And I I don't know, where do we want to begin here? Do we want to begin with the 27-point blowout against Illinois or the 42-point blowout to the 76ers? I guess this is what it's come to. All right, let's, let's do the 76ers first because this one makes me more angry. Like, I'm upset about the Illinois Gopher game. But this, this Timberwolf game really made me upset. So number one, this is my theory on certain NBA games. So, I think you have to play with a little attitude, effort, sense of urgency, whatever you want to call it, in certain games, right? Not like every night. I'm not expecting every night guys to be on the floor. We, we should, but that's just not the reality of it. Um, I, I think that certain games against certain teams should mean a little bit more to you. Um, the Kawhi versus Spurs. When Kawhi came back to San Antonio and played against Popovich and the Spurs, it meant a little more to him, and you saw that. LeBron versus the Cavs when he went to Miami that first time, and he came back to Cleveland, and he played at Quicken Loans Arena for the first time. That meant a little bit more. You would assume that the Timberwolves and Jimmy Butler weren't on the best terms, right? I mean, that was a debacle in the beginning of the year. You would think that the team would be amped up, you know, Wiggins, Towns, the whole team would be amped up to go to Philly and play Jimmy Butler and the 76ers. And they were just absolutely embarrassed. I mean, it's just the effort, the scoreboard after, I mean, 83 points given up in the first half. The Timberwolves gave up 83, and Townsend Wiggins, your guys, that you you picked over Butler, 12 points for Wiggins and 13 for Towns. I expect that from Wiggins because Wiggins is just soft, but Towns, really? You were the guy that really was stepping up during the practice and was talking about, you know, I'm not scared of nobody. You have 13 points? And I'm, I'm, are we surprised? Let's be honest. Are we surprised that this happened? If, if I would have told you the score, if I would have told you, okay, who won by 41 points? Are you going to tell me that the Timberwolves are going to go into Philly and win by 41? How do you not expect this? But the effort, I mean, it's just really? Like, there's nothing else I can really say more than really. Like, this is really going to happen? Is this really how it went down? You lost by 42 How do you let the guy who trolled your franchise made the players look like absolute scrubs embarrass you and tell you, well, I'm Jimmy Butler, I took the third stringers, and I still beat the starters? How do you let a guy that belittled both of your superstars take your lunch money and beat you by 41? How do you let that happen to your team? Towns and Wiggins. 
The Sixers were up 115 to 90 going into the fourth quarter. They still outscored them 34-17 in the fourth. They were up 15 and they still outscored you 34-17 in the fourth quarter. Let that sink in. What does that show? I mean, that's just mentality. The 76ers wanted to kick your butt, and that's exactly what they did. They took it to you. Butler had his guys fired up. You can say whatever you want about Jimmy Butler, but he was out for revenge on Tuesday. He was not going to lose that game. Say what you want about Jimmy Butler, but he is a dog. He wants to win. He's got a killer mentality. And the Timber Puppies are filled with chihuahuas that just want nothing to do with stepping up to the bully. You know, you get two different types of players when you get punched in the mouth. The ones that get motivated, the Jimmy Butlers, and the ones that shrivel up and don't want any part of retaliation. They want no part of just any type of revenge. And unfortunately, those are the two superstars on the Minnesota Timberwolves. Andrew Wiggins and Carl Towns. Way more Andrew Wiggins. I I do believe that Towns has dog to him. But Wiggins, I mean, if he gets punched in the face, he'll just sit and just look at you. I mean, granted, he won't cry or anything because he's just so emotionless. But he won't, he, he won't, I mean, he would never come and attack you back. I also have to put a little blame on Ryan Saunders. I mean, Ryan, this is a pretty big game and your guys are just, lifeless there's no energy no urgency and then Joel Embiid takes to Instagram and and goes quote it was an honor to be part of the third stringers and get a win against real NBA starters wow it's just a big joke I mean every team every every GM every coach they look at the Timberwolves and they laugh Man, at least we're not them. That, that, that's what people say if they're in the dog days and they're not playing well. Eh, at least we're not the Timberwolves. At least we're not a laughing stock. It's the same thing every single year. Ever since Garnett left, you lost all of your toughness. You lost any sense of pride in the franchise. It's all gone, man. It's a joke when you think of the Timberwolves organization. Every tough game on the schedule, they fold. Every above 500 teams, it's like they completely change the way they play. It's just, it's a fraud team. It's a fraud franchise, and it starts up top. Now let me switch gears to the Gophers. Can I, and I was so high on the Gophers, I don't know why I let it, do, I don't know why I do it to myself. The Gophers, who are 13-3, and 3-2 three, three and two in conference play, you're feeling good. They go into Champaign, Illinois, they're 4-12, and 12. you think, alright, you know, we can get this win on the road, then we can move on. You got Penn State next, Michigan, got some tough games ahead, let's get this win in Illinois. I had a feeling... Okay, I didn't think this was going to be an easy game, so I'm going to start off by saying that. I told people I don't like this game. Illinois played teams very tough in the past. They've really, they've they've had some tough luck. They've played a lot of teams tough, but they just haven't been able to get out on the winning side. I knew this was going to be a tough game. But to lose by 27, and they could have ran it up even more. You lose by 27 to Illinois? Really? You're down 51-28 at halftime? And if this is the sign that if Amir Coffey has an off game, and he did last night, he had his worst game of the season, 2 for 13 and 9 points, if that's going to equivalent into a 27-point loss to Illinois, well, what the hell is going to happen when he does this against Michigan or he does this against uh, Michigan State or Nebraska? I mean... You got to show some depth in on this team. You look at the scoreboard. You look at the box score. I mean, Jordan Murphy, you're supposed to be the guy. 11 points, 4 of 6 shooting, you're going to shoot the ball 6 times. Gabe Kausher, 3 for 9. Debris McBrayer, 3 for 8. Curry, 3 for 7. And Isaiah Washington, I, I, I just... I don't know, man. I really don't. I don't know about this kid. I, I like his game, but it just doesn't seem like it translates. It doesn't seem like it fits the Gopher system. 
Daniel Aturu had the best game. But there is no excuse to giving up. I mean, if you look at Illinois and the way they shot the ball, 8 of 16 from 3, 56% from the field, where is the defense? As the Gophers just get embarrassed. And everyone takes a step back, you know. And, and that's the most thats the most unfortunate thing. It seems like every team that you think is going to be good this year or think that's going to have a successful year, they have one of these games. Not one of these games. They have a couple of these games where they're in big spots and they just completely fold. And it's the norm here. It's almost like it's more shocking if the team wins in a big spot than when they lose. And that's what it's come to. The Gophers, the Timberwolves, show me something. Give me something. Gopher season isn't over. Like I said, I'm more upset over the Timberwolves because that's just lack of pride and lack of effort. And and that's just, I mean, you know, the fans are just sitting there and saying, give us something more, please. And they don't, they don't give us anything. And the Gophers... I don't think their season is over. I don't think this is one of those games where you're like, oh my gosh, like this season's over. But Patino's got to be feeling a hot seat. If he doesn't make the tournament this year, I I, I think he's done, man. I really do. I think he's done. You look at his body of work, it's a tournament, and then it's a NIT, and then it's a tournament, and then it's an awful year, a tournament, awful year. You got to stay consistent. You can't go from 20-something wins to nine in one season. There's just, I don't care about injuries, whatever. You can't let that happen as a head coach. And if he doesn't make the tournament this year, I think he's gone. Quick little break here, and you'll get negative Dave's thoughts, and we'll come on here and cry even more about these couple losses this week. Stay with us. Minnesota has sure had its share of sports blunders. Number one is the the Bopsy twins, Bellevue and Levine. Because I think it's one guy. And I think the other guy that show you on pictures or in the media is just some bobo that doesn't, he's just like like the janitor or something. They just throw a suit on him. Nobody breaks them down quite like Stephen Dave. This year, when you signed Kirk Cousins, the question wasn't even close to being if this team makes the playoffs. The question mm-hmm. was, you need to get home field because of what happened last year in Philly. Let's rave with Negative Dave. Take it away, fellas. And we welcome you back here to the Strom Sports Show. Uh, I've got an angry Negative Dave on the phone today. Before we get into everything, Dave, how are you today? Everything okay? Yeah. Let's just get right to it. I don't want to, you know, I'm not going to blow smoke up here. I, it's a nice day down here in Arizona. It's going to be about 70 and sunny. I'm sure it's crappy in New Jersey. It always is. Yep. And uh, Minnesota's about, uh, they're looking at snow and minus digits this weekend, so I know it's bad back there. <laughs> All right, let's so get on to it. without further ado, let's begin with a, well, we'll name the stuff we'll talk about first. We're going to obviously get into the Gophers, Wolves. Uh, Dave's got some thoughts on the Gary Kubiak situation with the Vikings, the new hiring. I guess he's going to oversee Kevin Stefanski. It's another one of those weird NFL, we're just going to name you something and put you on the team. And then we got the Wild. So we begin with the Gophers, who had just an absolutely horrible loss to Illinois by 27 points, a no-show. Amir Coffey had his worst game of the year, and if that's the case... I don't know what the season's going to be if Amir Coffey has a rough shooting night. What was your thoughts on this game, Dave? Well, you know, I'm I'm a casual basketball guy. I love college more than pro. And probably because the Timberwolves have, you know, watching 30 years of that will put you in severe depression. <laughs> so I, I've, I've really watched the Gophers pretty closely since the Haskins era. And I was disappointed they couldn't get a coach in here six years ago. A lot of people didn't want to interview or they couldn't get, find a fit. And they chose, you know, Richie, your guy, Richie Pitino. I think he's like the 10th person they talked to. <laughs> six, okay, look, he's 30 and 62 in the Big Ten yep. in his sixth year. You, are you happy with those numbers? Of course I'm not happy with those numbers. But I, I, I don't know. He got us to the tournament. And that, that was like a, the biggest tease for me because when you're in the tournament, it's the best feeling in the world. It's like you're part of the March Madness and you're not a loser. You're not at the NIT. Look, I get what you're saying. That was a horrible loss. I have no defense for yesterday, Dave. Well, let's, I mean, first of all, I sit down last night and I'm kind of excited to watch him, you know, because you don't know. You think there's some possibilities this year. 
you know they're playing Illinois, and it, it should be, at this point, 